call to the podium our first three guests for the morning panel. Massimiliano Gianzanti, President of Confagricoltura. Good afternoon. Good, good morning. Well, welcome. Please take a seat. And with him, we have Dino Scannavino, President of CIA Italian Agricultures, Italian Farmers. I'm sorry, um, Gian Michele Passerini is actually here on behalf of Dino. And uh, Ermete Relacci, the president of the Simola Foundation. So our first three guests, let's welcome them on the stage. You can take your mask off here, um, maybe some social distancing. Good morning. Please take your seats. So let's try to go into the details of this uh, topic. We said farming for future. We said 10 actions that uh, will actually set Italy at the forefront of this battle. But we want to understand if this idea of advanced farming uh, is actually welcomed by our guests, if it's actually providing food for thought. Is this a way to protect your plants, to um, um, approach the um, green transition. Uh, it is a way to face the future scientifically and responsibly, not only from environmental standpoint, but also in terms of the economic sustainability of farms. I will start asking Massimiliano Gianzanti. Grazie. Thank you. First of all, I would like to greet Piero Gattoni, Maron Kelly, the Vice President Baron Kelly for this, uh, for inviting me and all the guests who are here and the speakers. Um, and I will try to share some reflections with you. I s would like to begin from what uh, mm, Mrs. Rossi referred to earlier in her presentation. We must start to think about what opportunities there are today for farmers and what the role of farming must be. But if we look at a much broader scenario, which is that of ecologic transition and energy transition, that as citizens, as Europeans and as, as Italians, we are going to be experiencing and participating. Before us, there are two great challenges. First of all, the farm to form strategy and then the fit for 55 projects, so two large projects that projects that, on the one hand, require us to preserve natural resources, and not forget that even though we are producers of renewable energy, we are also producers of food. So, in connection to population growth, which is going to uh, to bring us to be 10 billion people, we will have to produce more, preserve. Resource. It's a mix of different things that have to be balanced. Of course, there are great challenges, particularly on the great themes of the ecosystem. So how to protect the ecosystem, how to reduce emissions, and how to make um, production activities more compatible with natural processes. Well, I hope that the processes of change before us in which farmers are going to participate are going to be also supported by other economic sectors in Europe and abroad, because it's evident that anything we say today is has to refer to a system which is made uh, by the world in which people all go in the same direction. Otherwise, um, we would be, of course, impacted on uh, from an economic standpoint, because if countries such as China, Brazil, uh, India, if they do not also protect natural resources, we would be out of the market in terms of competitiveness. Uh, in that transition process which lies before us, agriculture has two unique opportunities. On the one hand, play a part uh, in, in contributing to this great transition on the topic of energy. We have started a path of if, over 15 years ago, and today there are over 7 gigawatts of um, green agricultural production. There are 1,400 plants, plants that produce um, uh, solar energy, micro eolic. So farmers 15 years ago decided to rise up to, uh, to a challenge. They decided the green possible was already possible because 15 years ago, a group of pioneers decided to start and produce energy. Today, we have shown the country that this is possible, and we have to uh, 
show the country that that model of energy transition, which the country is experiencing in this process, farming, that of agriculture is going to play an essential part the agricultural sector. I think we're going to go towards electricity, especially in the field of light uh, mobility. And um, as um, farmers, as a farmer to go, together with other farmers, we want to play a part in the electrification process that is going to be focusing on light sustainable mobility. And there we have a great opportunity in, in one sense, uh, strengthening the production of biogas because of course there is a topic, that of biomethane, but there are many systems that will not, that cannot be transformed or new, one, new ones will be created, but they will not be able to connect to the methane grid. Um, so grid. So there is a great interest today in terms of those who transfer uh, energy, a great, uh, utilities and infrastructure, and also those who are interested in purchasing electric power, so the great uh, process uh, utilities. So the future is for those who are going to produce biogas. On the other, those who will produce uh, um, photovoltaic uh, energy. Um, so the ele electricity is going to play a great role. And then there is also the old topic of heavy transport and methane. <laughs> In this case, too, farming can give a great contribution, and the Vipiteno plant has shown this. Production of uh, agricultural methane can contribute to 10% of uh, the country's supply. I think that the NRRP must be a great opportunity for all of us because here we all agree on the same vision because we all think that the future, that in the future, whoever has. Uh, um, cattle has to produce biomethane. It's a duty because if the production model, let us not forget that first of all, we are producers of, of goods, food. So in that production model that wants to be successful, to be made in Italy and sustainable means to have a competitive edge compared to the others. That uh, In that transition process, all farm companies will have to uh, show that, that they are sustainable in their processes. So farms that uh, uh, um, use uh, energy that they produce is, uh, are going to be very important. Ettore and uh, Michele know this very well, but the topic of um, um, environmentally damaging um, aid, uh, if um, agricultural diesel oil was not going to be supported anymore, we would have to replace um, tractors, etc., with uh, engines that use biomethane. And so the exchange on the spot is going to be difficult. And also the topic of farm income is important because if we look at farms and at the evolution of farms in the past 15 years, farms have grown more in terms of innovation progress, scientific progress, and these are farms that have renewable energy plants within their farms because 15 years ago together we decided we wanted to give a future to Italian farming by integrating primary income with an alternative source source and renewable renewable energy sources allow those who are on the market today because today it's easy to look at the price of commodities and those who produce grain soy uh, are very happy but if you produce uh, let's say uh, dairy products you have an impact on your income because of raw material costs and if you do not find a balance in terms of the cost of producing one liter of milk without a renewable energy plant is a company that probably has no future. So by way of conclusion, I would like to say that before us lies a great opportunity and we have to, of course, work as a team, cooperate. I hope we are all going to share the same vision concerning the production system for this country, the ecological transition of this country. And in this connection, we can also say that two thirds of the Italian territory and the president of Legambiente knows this, but two thirds of Italian um, territory is covered by farm activities, woods and forests. Two thirds of farm um, land capture um, CO2, releasing um, oxygen. So what would these two thirds be even if they were enhanced today? Um, protein crops represent another opportunity. We continue to ask the ministry 
a plan for protein production. We need that now for animal husbandry and for other aspects. So we need a plan for uh, reforestation and improvement of current forests in Italy, whether they be private or public woods. So I think that in this sense, we can, we must do a lot, but we can only, only, only do that if we share the same vision and if all together we have the intention of working hand in hand with decision makers, legislators, because today we have created an infrastructure of rules and legislation to allow all farmers who want to move from biogas to biomethane to do so, but there are still some implementation decrees that are missing. So here too, in developing regulations, it's evident that if all together we can uh, put pressure on the legislator, we will bring home the result that we are all uh, waiting for much um, sooner. Of course, then farmers, CIB, the other associations will decide upon, depending on the situation, if the current biogas plant will continue to produce electric power with a tariff that we will define with the ministry or will they will turn their system to produce biomethane. Um, those who started must help those who have not started yet, convincing them to create uh, energy grids uh, energy cooperative, consortia, whatever you want to call them. But today, more than ever, we must um, convince people about the fact that farm is not a polluting an activity. And even though today we do contribute to the increase of ammonia in the atmosphere, we have to prevent this by turning a farm, uh, um, an animal farm, uh, into an agro uh, um, an agro producing an agro farm producing energy so thank you thank you for your words um, and thank you for pointing out uh, the importance of cooperating so our friends from cia uh, italian farmers um, with mr passerini please make us understand what you think uh, given the proposal made by farming for future is this a proposal that can be integrated into the new attention or sensitivity that those who work in the farming sector feel yes thank you i would like to greet you on behalf of president scannavino uh, we had to he tried to be here but uh, he was not able to come so he greets you yes well CIA is also a member of the committee that is going to discuss and examine the various proposals. And I must say that the work carried out by CIB um, that started a long time ago, looking at the new needs um, uh, also in connection to biodiversity, Green New Deal, Farm to Fork. So there is a whole scenario that we started considering. And then there are uh, the, the opportunities afforded by the NRP uh, came to be. Uh, and of course, we have to rise up to the challenges and seize these opportunities. So what are these challenges and why do we believe that this strategy is a strategy that can bring us to positive uh, outcomes? And therefore, we want to share things because of this. Well, the challenge is that we're trying to move the role of farming from that of producing goods, food, food stuff, which is, of course, the main historical role of farming, to playing a central role in connection to the sustainability that farms can play. Um, um, why is this important? But, well, there are so many things, and many were already highlighted by Massimiliano. Um, that is also related to our approach to consumers. So today, our challenge is not just that of the Kyoto Protocol, but also that of overcoming the diffidence that people have or the bucolic view that people have of farms. We see that, the stakeholders see that there, is, there are investments, there is know-how, there is innovation. So biogas, biomethane, energy, that is going to be a choice that will depend on the size of farms and but then the energy, energy uh, communities is also a great opportunity biogas could also represent um, an answer in remote areas think about mountain areas i live there we've got uh, cheeses of great quality but we've got a problem with waste so we have to make our products more and more sustainable, but at the same time, we must ensure profitability 
uh, that is also important for, for consumers towards uh, creating a better world. So this is a mix that in this strategy has been well identified. But of course, we must not stop here because compensation um, and the, um, the production phase is very important because then the final cycle, the complete cycle, it has to be positive in connection to CO2 emissions and pollutants of other types. But there is a further topic that we should develop. This is a request I have made in the past, but I would like to repropose it here to CIB and to Mrs. Rosses. We have to get to the point of storing that CO2 that today, through the production of biogas and biomethane, we can compensate for, but still a great part runs the risk of being brought back into the air. We compensate for it, but a part is returned. So the future challenge of for this plant is sequestration of the molecule of CO2. Let us consider biofuels, bioplastics. The whole world is going uh, in the direction of storing of uh, CO2 sequestration and then um, use it for other operations that science will provide uh, us uh, an, with an answer. So we have to understand what is the better way, the better way to follow at, uh, at uh, sustainable costs. Of course, you know how much startups uh, uh, cost. Sometimes there, are, there, there, are, there is aid, but then at the end, projects have to be able to stand on their own feet. Uh, and to have a return on investment. So as uh, CIA, we believe that the CIB strategy uh, should be promoted and supported. There are, of course, a number of conditions to be met, but we have to focus, of, of course, on farms, placing them at the center and giving farms back that value of carbon sinks capable of capturing and storing carbon. Thank you, Mr. Passerini. And before... Um, we end this session. We will, you will have the chance of uh, um, making further comments. So um, we will do that uh, later, later on. Now I will give the floor to Mr. Rialacci. But before doing that, there is a video message that we were sent by the policy, uh, sorry, by the Minister Stefano Patuanelli. A minister of um, Agricultural, Food and Forestry Policy. So I would like to thank the Italian, uh, the CIB, for um, inviting me to participate in this event. Unfortunately, I'm not able to attend. I would like to greet uh, Piero Gattoni, president of CIB, and all the other distinguished speakers. I would like to thank you to place, for placing at the center of the debate a central theme, that of ecological transition. Um, a topic that I also brought to the G20 agriculture in Florence that ended up by the signing of the Charter of Sustainability. Um, this is an encouraging sign towards uh, achieving the 2030 goals that Florence Charter highlights a triple dimension of sustainability, which is also economic and social, not just environmental. At the European level, we have addressed this topic during the negotiations for the new CAP, um, which uh, came to a turning point. The new features of the CAP are, are a stronger uh, green architecture, um, the um, funds for supporting farmers, uh, to fa for them to face uh, environmental emergencies. Um, there are 50 billion euros until 2027. We will have to develop our national plan and develop a number of interventions to support the farming sector to make it more com um, competitive. Uh, as you know, thanks to the NRRP, we have a further tool to allow us to reach our goals, reduction of emissions, uh, renewable energy sources, uh, protection of soil, uh, protection of uh, water resources. So my ministry uh, is responsible for five projects within the NRRP. There are several projects uh, concerning uh, several topics. What is very interesting for the farming sector, uh, there are also other interventions focusing on the development of biogas, biomethane. The resources 
available are about a billion euros and four and a half are devoted to the development of renewable energy sources in the farming sector. I'm convinced that we've got a unique opportunity of making a leap forward in the field of agroenergy and the circular economy. And to do that, we need a set of regulations defining a clear uh, framework without obstacles uh, represented by bureaucracy um, that would um, stop uh, farmers from taking advantage of this. So we are very interested in uh, the topics that are being discussed, so biogas, biomethane, are sectors that are very important because they can turn um, animal waste in real resources. And uh, the proposal of Farming for Future is capable of shedding light on the fact that energy production can be introduced in a balanced way in an agro-food and circular model. Innovation is an essential uh, uh, it's an essential is essential because y your proposal can reduce uh, environmental impacts the 10 actions that you proposed represent um, a summary of the path that the agri-food sector will have to follow in the years to come. The document will no doubt represent a useful reference point in several sectors that involve the Ministry from the new strategic plan for the new CIP, uh, the NRP, uh, the management of national funds. So I hope that we can continue to work together on these topics that are so complex and at the same time crucial not just for the sector, but also, I would say, for the entire agri-food sector. Thank you. Thank you, Minister Patuanelli. Well, I thought it was important, before continuing our discussion, it was important to listen to the words of our minister, and, I would like, and I'm addressing Ermita Rialacci because he was a pioneer on these topics, and he did so in the last 20 to 30 years, I think. It seems to me that there are some common understandings between uh, the farming uh, industry and also the institutions, finally. And so there are several topics here that um, have come to the forefront. So the development of new forms of advanced farming, uh, new forms of energy production, new forms of sustainability. And on the other, there is also the tragedy of the pandemic, of course, that has uh, uh, led us to face the great challenges that lie before us. Yes, it is definitely very interesting that Europe in the pandemic, during the pandemic, has actually sped up uh, its process because at the beginning of the pandemic, um, I think you might remind, uh, I might remember that a great debate was, are we still going to talk about environment since there's the pandemic right now? Well, Europe gave an answer. Europe had already sped up on the Green Deal before the pandemic. And the Green New Deal already represented an answer to the idea that Europe had actually accomplished its mission. With Ettore, we have talked about this many times. I remember that I was really impressed by something the Pope said in 2014 in Strasbourg. It was very, very hard because he talked about um, a kind of Europe that was old and tired. Um, he compared Europe to a, a grandmother that was uh, no longer um, fertile or lively. So if the wasn't the Pope to say this, well, these words would have not been welcomed. And then uh, there was the Paris Agreement. And then the Brexit happened. Well, during the pandemic, Europe has sped up the process. Um, not only with Next Generation EU or with the recovery plan, but also with ordinary um, um, funds, because three sectors are the main beneficiaries. So um, green transition, digital transition, innovation, and uh, social cohesion and healthcare. So it's three sectors, it's not 30 sectors. And Europe is not doing this because uh, um, it's um, good and because uh, they want to make Greta happy because they un Europe understands that its economy um, must be and can be protected this way. I recall lots of things regarding the carbon tax. It is something that reinforces the importance of a European model that is different from others, but it is more, more suitable to rise up to these challenges, uh, the pandemic or the climate crisis. I remember that the first sentence of the manifesto of Assisi 
promoted by Ettore, Stefano, Francesco. There were many, many promoters of this manifesto. You were there too, I think. Red, facing with courage the climate crisis is necessary, but it also represents an extraordinary opportunity to make our economy and to make our society more tailored to men and therefore more capable of competing in the future. So that's the game we have to play. And this game has to be faced by changing and not being a minority in our attitude. Well, environmentalists are uh, some of them. I'm not talking about Lega Biente, of course. But some environmentalists are ready to say no and to point things out. So they are less organized when uh, trends are changed. Sometimes I listen to surreal debates, for example, a debate on nuclear energy now. Well, nuclear energy did not end because of referenda like the one we held in Italy. Well, it died because it costs a lot, apart from the military application. But of course, we have to keep an eye on that and uh, it will be a long story to to tell today. But currently in Western Europe, there are two um, power plants that are being built, one in Clermontville and one I don't recall where. Uh, they had to be uh, completed uh, 10 years ago and uh, costs have quadrupled. So, um, that energy has to be paid for 35 years, twice as much the energy that the British are currently paying now. So, that's not the answer to cut the electricity bill. Well, the answer is biomethane, so to incentivize the uh, production of renewables. And this is the answer to the second step that uh, Europe has set. So, um, zero net emissions by 2050. So, the only methane available in 2050 will be biomethane. There won't even be methane. Um, so the problem here is to understand that these are not the things, these are not the battles that we have to fight. There are new battles that we have to fight that um, um, combine a number of, of values. It's important to understand where farming is going. Well, Italian farming uh, has lots of problems, of course. Let's not underestimate this. Also, legality problems. Um, I won't go into the details, but um, uh, it has the highest number of firms, of farms, or women and young people. And this is mainly linked to the fact that it gives more meaning to the quality of products, to the connection with the territory, but also technology, innovation play a role. So Gian Santi is right. If does a farm that um, installs uh, PV panels, well, it's easier to have new skills. If there's a farm that produces biogas, and I want to be very clear on this, well, PV plants have to be um, installed in areas uh, that do not prevent farming. Uh, they have to integrate part of uh, farming activities, and this way the farm gets stronger. Last year, the Netherlands installed 1,130 megawatts of PV energy, Italy 750. Well, the Netherlands are as big as Sicily and Sardinia combined, um, less than one third of our inhabitants. So this means that we've got a problem, and this is the same problem that is uh, hampering the um, dissemination of biogas. There's a colleague here that um, collected information about the 300, 400 cases that uh, are expressing their position against the biogas plant. They are presented like a sort of death star, like in Star Wars, um, whereas it is something very simple. Those who are opposing biogas plant, well, don't even mention Greta and say Greta is right, and then as soon as we propose something that could help uh, do what Greta asks, they are against it. So we have to become aware of our strength. 
and as uh, green chemistry in the future of agriculture to consider as well. There's that piece to consider. That's a piece of the development of uh, farming that is actually laying stress on tradition, on identity, on quality, on territory, but is also rising up to new challenges. And um, if we look at each other, we would uh, uh, realize We would realize uh, something very important. Um, I think you would just watch the uh, final game of the volleyball European Championships, and the coach said they were playing against Slovenia, and um, it was a hard game. Why do you have that face? There's faces. You are playing a European final. It's a tie. It's 10-10. So why these faces? So this is something I would like to tell also people that are working here. Why these faces? Let's cheer up a little. Uh, this is a challenge, and this is a challenge for the future. It's a challenge we have to rise up to, of course. Stefano knows that I love Frank Capra, and Frank Capra was one of the most important directors in the US. He was born in Sicily. Uh, it was of Italian descent. And once he said something beautiful, very American at the end of the day, but he said, amateurs play with pleasure when the sun is shining, professionals play to win while the storms is raging out there. It's not time for amateurs here. Thank you very much for your comments. You mentioned Europe because we are amidst this big change that our continent is going through. So um, just some highlights from the three of you. John Santi on Europe, because it's the other half of your life. How are we dealing with Europe when it comes to these questions? How do we feel? Well, I will be very short. Well, in Europe, first of all, Debates are engaging farmers because there's a model in the Mediterranean area that is based on the big values of biogas production, methane production, and uh, photovoltaic energy. Um, and then there are those in energy in uh, sorry in Germany that are proposing a model. Some manufacturing companies are proposing a model uh, uh, based on a biodiesel. Um, fueled um, engines. So our vision is slightly different from the Germans, from the Belgians. So we will try to promote models that aim at a placing more value on renewables that are at zero cost mainly. Uh, for example, uh, some uh, flower, some flower um, um, growing or or other types of crops can definitely be useful. I would like to thank Hermete Lialacci for what he said. It's time for the professionals now. So amateurs out. We uh, cannot accept that. This is uh, a professional uh, forum. We are all professionals here. We owe professionals as well some concrete answers. We can't afford that anyone, anyone, Uh, can run risks. So those who say no today, uh, it means that uh, they are thinking about renewables coming from abroad. If we risk having a high electricity bills, this is due to the fact that many people have said no to the development of renewables. Otherwise, we would have invested in uh, renewables. And if we did so, we would have battery accumulation, battery storage that would have helped us, our citizens, to spend less. Thank you very much. Thank you for being so clear. Passerini, um, we talked about training. We have to train not only citizens, but also um, everyone to accept these plants. We must also form and train those who work in the fields. Um, where are we now? Well, I'm pretty proud to say that we are pretty ahead in this, but it's not something 
that we have seen now. It's been like this for some 20 years. Um, of course, there's organic farming, there's conventional farming. I won't go into the details, but in terms of energy saving, in terms of resources, in terms of animal welfare, of uh, use of um, um, drugs and uh, chemicals, well, we are pretty far ahead. The consumers have an idea of farming that is, um, well, s sort of dreamy, but they don't really know what we are talking about. Uh, in all Italian production systems, what's the sector that over the past 10 years, 20 years has developed as much as farming? Well, I think the answer is pretty straightforward. Well, of course, there are sectors that have um, shorter reaction times. But we are uh, an outdoor factory. We have to deal with the uh, weather conditions. We have to deal with a number of issues that other industries don't have. So training when it comes to uh, our people, well, it has, has to be improved, it has to be qualified. And then there's information and promotion. And this is something that is up to policymakers, I believe. Not because we don't want to do our homework, of course. Our presence here, our attendance here with the three most important trade associations represented here bears witness to the fact that we know that uh, agriculture has to take a step forward but this is not something that we have to do on a sector basis only something that has to be done systemat systematically so we have to attain the goal by 2030 and by 2050 thank you very much Pasarini. Well, I think this is something that we'll, we will have to do for our Earth, for our planet, for our soil. Um, um, what we have done for the oceans over the past uh, five to ten years uh, regarding plastics. Um, well, on land, on soil, there's still not, um, there's, there's still not such an awareness. Um, Ralachi, let's hear from you. We have been talking about Europe, but let's talk about the world. COP26 is about to take place in, in, in next week in Milan. Uh, the pre-COP meeting is going to take place. What's the state of play when it comes to the awareness in Europe? Well, Europe will have to make itself heard. Well, I think that this measure that will cause many, many conflicts, so to introduce um, uh, a custom duty on products um, that are entering Europe based on the CO2 they have produced will um, help us grow. Well, the Chinese won't agree, won't agree at the beginning. They want to win the technology battle. And in geopolitics, the clash between the US and China will be based on this as well. But it defends a production model combining beauty, value, rights, competitiveness, and technological innovation. And this can be done and must be done with choices like this. I think it's an open march. Europe has a lot to say. Italy has a lot to say. So there are many production sectors. Well, um, even uh, you know, in in the, in the fair that just took place in Milan regarding furniture. Well, we are the first in the world because we produce the best furniture because we use less energy, we use less water, and we recover more wood. We recycle more wood. There's an ancient. Uh, uh, production method adopted by Italy. That's a piece of the future. And I would like to thank Piero Gattoni once again. We've known each other for many years because this idea of biogas done right is one of the cases where we can actually uh, place this idea into the right context. Sorry for being so outspoken. It is not a question of saying we have to do this, this and that. We have to be better, we have to be stronger, we have to win because we are the ones producing a more competitive economy that is more innovative in terms of technology. This is also under the banner of the Manifesto Necessis. That's the challenge ahead. I would like to thank our three guests. Uh, Aralacci, Passerini, and John Santi, thank you very much. So now we are going 
to welcome the next three speakers. The President of Lega Ambiente, Stefano Ciafani. Good morning and welcome. Giorgio Mercuri, President of Fedagri. And the President of Coldiretti, Ettore Prandini. Uh, welcome you three. Buongiorno. Good morning. Let's start from Ciafani. Uh, con... So let us continue what we were saying with Mr. Lialacci. So we are before a sector that decides to rise up to a challenge that of green transition, agro energy transition in an innovative manner. So we were saying, we were talking about the difficulties that lie before us, but it's a path that perhaps with the Farming for Future proposal can give an answer to the question that we asked ourselves to start with. Green possible? Yes, maybe. Mr. Ciafani, the floor is yours. Yes, first of all, of all I would like to thank Chib and CIB and Piero Gattoni for inviting me again. With Piero, we have been working a lot effectively and uh, yes, really the ability to identify the right vision and to implement it courageously. So we we do, we very much agree. So Lega Ambiente and CIB are very much in tune in this sense. As far as this project is concerned, I remember when uh, Piero presented it to us, I think a year ago it was, more or less. And um, when um, he presented it, we had no doubts in terms of deciding to support it. And in fact, we just, um, you know, debated some details, but that is just common. Um, but we decided to support it um, with great energy. And if you know Lega Ambiente, this is no surprise because the association wishes to set up a concrete, uh, sustainable path, uh, which is cross-sectional, involving the, the agricultural sector. If you know our association, this comes as no surprise. But when those 10 actions that were presented this morning were illustrated, we thought that they represent a concrete step. We hear a lot about green transition. Sometimes it's even used in the wrong way. Um, but it's a roadmap, which is something that we share, we want to support. It's based on 10 actions, and it focuses on the green reconversion of farms. We need to be concrete at the time. So the time of professionals has come. We have to be practical because words are not enough anymore. And it's a time to make brave choices because you can be concrete and practical also by looking at the past, to the past. But on the contrary, we have to project ourselves towards 2030 and 2050. We cannot just look to the past. And this roadmap focuses, places at the center the anaerobic digester and around AD, the production of biogas and biomethane. You raise, you up the ante focusing on the sustainability of farms. This is really a winner as an idea. So we are not talking about, you know, future technologies. When I participate in the initiatives we bring about on supporting biothenin plants, I remember that when I was at university 30 years ago, in 1992, I visited, I looked at uh, uh, an anaerobic digester that was in the Rome, uh, in one of the Rome plants where a waste sludge uh, where we converted. Well, this technology was already known at that time. So when you, when you address this issue, you, people think that these technologies are something that are, is yet to come, etc., or are dangerous. But these uh, plans are necessary to start an ac a series of actions that must not be limited to the production of energy or power, which is essential, of course. Green possible is absolutely the right question, and the answer is yes. The answer to it is yes. And I get back to the topic of green transition. Um, green transition 
cannot but involve the farm sector. But I think that the time has come to speak about green transition for what it actually is. We've heard in the past months uh, about green transition as being a, a terrible thing, um, like when a vase falls from a balcony and it falls on the people who are walking below. It's like a bloodbath. Well, if we start like this, then we are going to go back to the 20th century, to the past. And I think also that words are important. So it's important to address this topic. Uh, and we need to say, so we, we heard that in the automotive field, transition to electricity is a bloodbath. Well, we have the right time to address the green transition of the whole sector. It's evident that green, the electric cars do not have the same features of internal bus combustion engine-based cars. It's, we know, we understand that there are difficulties, that there are issues, and we can you know, address them with the manufacturing uh, world. If we look at our energy bills, we've been discussing for two weeks about the fact that energy bills are going to be more expensive and responsibility. Initially, and then fortunately, there was a change. Um, Minister Cingolani finally yesterday on the papers clarified uh, what had been said. But the energy bill is going to increase because we depend too much on the gas that comes from Russia, not because of the green transition. So we are addressing, we decide to face a topic, and then, you know, you make a mess of it not to discuss the real issues behind uh, problems. So the time has come for scientific analysis and also the time has come for being honest about things and say explicitly if we want to tread the most courageous path or not. And this is also the case for environmentally damaging aid. This issue has to be addressed. With Ettore, we spoke about these issues many, many times, and it's evident that aid concerning the farm sector are what cause distortions, and they have allowed farms to be able to move on as they were. Well, sh we should address this issue because um, we need to help farms uh, how what to reconvert their tractors, their, their, their machinery, helping them to set aside diesel fuel-based uh, powered vehicles and use vehicles based uh, that, that, that are powered by, uh, with electricity or biomethane. We cannot just say, you know, uh, that w we don't want to address these issues. Otherwise, we will not be able to move forward. Green reconversion or transition uh, is possible. And uh, I see that I am taking up more time that I was given. Uh, Filippo is looking at me giving me the bad eye. So um, we have to act in a practical way. We have to put together all the pieces in the puzzle to be able to achieve sustainability. We have to decarbonize farms. Yes, well, we are aware of that. We must cover all roofs. We must cover stables w with panels, etc. But then we also have to clarify things because today we don't want silica uh, fields covered by by solar cells. We don't want that. But today, with modern agri-photovoltaic systems, you, you can have a photovoltaic panel on the soil without changing the soil, because the soil has to continue to produce food for people and animals. There are solutions. Technological solutions exist. We just have to set the rules. Otherwise, here too, we are going to, you know, think that everything is the same and we get nowhere. We have to decarbonize logistics in the case of tractors, but this is also the case with lorries uh, that bring products from farms to markets. Um, so there are um, lorries that use liquid biomethane. So this is another reconversion that we have to support. We have to focus, remember, the central role to be replaced by soil. In the fight, fight against climate change, we know that 
that soil quality is decreasing. This is a problem for farming, but it's also a greater problem in general. So we have to promote fertility by by using digestate, uh, uh, slurry. Um, we have to adopt uh, innovations, the highest innovation, for instance, to promote uh, uh, sludge distribution uh, so that this waste is uh, introduced directly in soil. I could speak about uh, the use of chemical, the use of water. We have to think about all these aspects within the framework of a system. And in the farming of future framework, this has been outlined very well. We have to do this. We need to allow farms from the biggest to the smallest to be able to implement all these solutions. Today, there are additional economic resources. The regulations regulations are essential and helpful, especially if they simplify procedures, because this, of course, allows uh, systems to be reconverted. But of course, in this sense, we need people to take responsibilities. Well, well the government and the parliament must simplify um, same things and uh, uh, apply um, uh, approved decrees, and, but also the farming world has to go in the direction of innovation. And I think that this is something important. And from this discussion we are having, is something that has emerged very clearly. It's essential to really turn what we are talking about into practical actions. Thank you, Stefano Ciafani, President of Lega Ambiente. Thank you for being so direct. And I, I agree with this. Um, this um, this attitude, uh, uh, this enthusiasm, this uh, um, optimism. So we are going through a phase of great change, and it's at this time that great ideas and great innovators find uh, the, the the best breeding ground for their ideas. In the afternoon, we're going to uh, have several companies that will come here, innovative uh, firms, uh, farms, uh, that change some act sectors uh, in their that they that they work in, um, uh, turning them into further uh, opportunities for development. So we like this type of firms, and we were going to speak about this with Giorgio Mercuri, who is the president of Fedagri Corporation. Can it this be one of the central uh, axes on which to base the relaunch of the agro energy chain? Can this be? One of the sectors, thanks to which, for instance, the Farming for Future strategy can find adhesion. Well, first of all, allow me to greet you. Good morning to everyone. Thank you, Piero Gattoni and the Vice President and all the staff for organizing these two days of reflection on an important topic um, that we will delve e deeper into and consider also concrete aspects that have been brought to, that, to our attention and on which we would like to reflect. So what can cooperation do? Well, first of all, we start from an important principle. Uh, first of all, the farmer has to become a protagonist at this stage. Very often in renewable energy sector, farm, farmers just uh, sold the fields to others, and farmers were not the protagonists of this great opportunity that was afforded to us. So we have to become the protagonists in our activities. Uh, our main activity, of, of course, is food production, but in addition to food production, uh, energy production can be a great opportunity also to, to attract sorry, to achieve the sustainability of our products, which is important for uh, citizens and consumers. So we produce food, but we have to give a greater contribution to, uh, to the green uh, revolution, uh, to the green transition. And to do this, uh, we think that what we commonly call green transition passes through innovation and the technologies that we can use in our farms, in our firms. And we can do that particularly by promoting innovation that is widespread and involves all farms from large ones to small ones. Everyone has to be innovative to answer these requirements to reach these goals, but unfortunately not all sm uh, small older farmers can make these investments. So we need to help them. And the cooperative world has shown that uh, cooperating is very important for SMEs because small farms will not be able to make certain investments. And our contribution in this sense consists precisely in continuing to do what we do, S giving power to small firms to, for them to be able something great. We've done that in the food sector, but we must also do that 
in the field of the new challenges that the market is asking us to rise up to. And in this sense, I think that the experiences made by the cooperative world in the past 10 to 15 years in the field of renewables is very important experiences because many of our cooperatives today produce biogas uh, to produce uh, energy uh, power. They do not just do that in the animal husbandry sector where well, they are well developed, but also other sectors by using byproducts or waste products uh, have, have created biogas, uh, have set up biogas systems, plants. And in this sense, we need, of course, to uh, revise that regulatory framework also of looking at, at investments, but because because if we look at what the NRRP says, there are opportunities for reconversion and also opportunities for creating new plants. There are financial incentives, if we speak about self-consumption. And uh, we also think that whatever plant we were to create in a collective aggregated system in the uh, farming sector or in the agricultural chain must respond to sustainability issues and be sustainable at the same time. So we've often seen that, that not everything we produce can be then self-consumed. We need to place in the grid the excess production, the excess production coming from biomass. And in this sense, we expect that whenever there are chain-based projects that put together a system that gives con that contributes to the production of renewables, of biogas, biomethane, etc. In these projects, well, these projects should be financed not just for self-consumption purposes, which is important, of course, which are important, but they do not always make a plant sustainable. Um, what we are convinced about is that ecologic transition, green transition, uh, and what Italian farming has already done to, res to, uh, to respond to the requirements of farm to fork makes us very competitive uh, at market level. We are not newcomers in connection to the goals we have set uh, um, by the European Union. And in this sense, we need to make the public opinion and the political world understand that we do not need to be pressurized to do these things because we are already doing many things. This is what we want to go, uh, this is, is what we want to achieve, but we've got a lot of red tape, which is a problem, especially young people start uh, working in this field and then a committee of eight people may block the, the establishment of a biogas plant, for instance. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. President. And we will conclude by giving the floor to Ettore Prandini, president of Coldiretti. This morning, we heard so many key words, farming, uh, animal husbandry, biogas, and the big challenge of green transition, uh, the great challenge of the NRRP. Coldiretti um, sees in this, for instance, um, in the farming for future uh, in the farming for future strategy sees it as a strategy that can be one of the answers to 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 implement right away well first of all allow me to thank uh, the extraordinary work uh, that piero has been doing and that um, also angelo has been doing because the two of them have anticipated what our country needs. In other words, starting a dialogue between two different worlds or several different worlds, worlds that are different but that have a common goal, that is providing concrete answers to the need of firms and enterprises and farms. When we speak about recovery, we focus very often on the topic of the use of resources. Of course, this is very important. I'm it's essential and we cannot uh, risk wasting even a cent of the resources that are given to us. But unless we are capable of creating, of setting the stage for a real institutional reform in connection to the needs of firms in terms of simplification of regulations, less red tape and investing again on research in this country, well, I think that unless we do this, we miss a great opportunity because today we have the chance of doing these things. In a few years' time, this may not be the case anymore. 
And research is essential. Why? Well, because without research, we we are not speaking uh, in an informed manner. The topic of the renewables connected to the topic of renewables coming from digestate, which is essential, uh, brings us to the fact that we don't know really what this could uh, yield in terms of positive results for farmers or those who have a processing plant for biogas or biomethane. But it's also related to the topic of environmental sustainability. So if we look at things from this perspective, then we can, of course, give practical concrete opportunities. When we speak about research, we speak about the challenges that are raised by Europe, the European Union, also in the Farm to Fork project initiative. I often participate in many uh, meetings and I hear totally different versions depending on the context I am in. Farm to Fork is an opportunity on the one hand, but then the same people at a different meeting will tell you Farm to Fork is a problem because it's going to place us in the situation of having less food, less produce, the inability to implement strategic visions. Well, my position is completely different. Farm to Fork is a great opportunity that must not be missed, but it has to be supported by research. And if I think and if I look at the research sector, the topic of MPT and cisgenetic is not uh, uh, related to, to renewables. We run the risk of saying something just very general. If we say that GMOs are like just genetic and MTD, this is totally different. We cannot look to the past. We have to look to the future. Let us invest on in what is useful for committees. And MPTs and cis genetic can also provide an important answer in terms of producing more, in terms of granting productions also against uh, climate change, protecting productions against the pests, the so many pests that today there are also in our country. And uh, it is on these topics that we need to focus in order to strengthen our farms and also to strengthen ourselves in terms of our positions uh, at the EU level. Renewables, biogas, well, biogas is not uh, a, a process that is extinguishing itself. Some are trying to push us in this direction. Biomethane is good, but it's not an alternative to biogas. It's an entrepreneurial decision. We need in this country reclaim, reassert the fact that uh, freedom of uh, enterprises uh, means that entrepreneurs have to be free on what to invest and on how to invest within their own production activities. Then, of course, uh, there are those who, rightly enough, uh, are perhaps at the end of the contributions. Um, together with Piero, we have been supporting the fact that uh, if plants can be reconverted, they can be reconverted, should be reconverted. How? Well, by using the NRRP resources, because of the reconversion of these plants should not have an impact on entrepreneurs because it's, it's a need for the country itself. And at the same time, at one 1.5 kilometers, there should also be the possibility of for farms to connect for free to the grid in order to sell the gas they produce, developing mechanisms so that uh, those who can do so, and we are also convinced that when you you pro promote technology, then you get answers. Then we may also have small or uh, medium-sized biomethane plants that can produce the fuel that can also be used in, in the mobility sector, in, in, in using different engines. So. When we speak about this topic, we are not just thinking about replacing fuels with no alternative. Of course, we do need alternatives. Otherwise, uh, this is not just going to increase costs for companies because maybe farm diesel fuel is no longer uh, uh, supported financially. 
So we do need incentives in the field of agricultural diesel fuel until we have a new system that can be used by all entrepreneurs. And I wish to get back to the topic of biomethane and biogas. So the plants that are coming to the end of their cycle, well, some may be converted. We will help those who wish to convert them also financially. But there are plants that today we cannot convert anymore. And that and we have to think about this because uh, making people believe that all plants can be converted is a mistake. We would affect the, 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 the political decision makers who want to propose things that make us go forward. We have to propose incentives that make farms sustainable, not the 14 or 15 cents that we heard about so far. We have to speak about incentives above 20 cents, so nothing lower than that, to create, to set the stage for firms to be able to be supported in this transition. But this has to be done within the short term because incentives are about to come to an end. And this is not a topic that we can look at in six months' time because by the end of the month of October, we need to address this issue and solve it. And also in connection to the topic really of, of plants uh, and the issue of red tape, well, the topic of GSE, which is this uh, authority in Italy. So in simplifying rules, we need to set up a mechanism that quickly gives answers to those plants that ask for being connected to the grid. We cannot wait between six months and a year for a company that has completed a, a plant is recognized incentives. It's too long. I would like to address another topic that was also addressed by Stefano and Emete earlier and also by other presidents and that is the topic of solar power um, here too making general statements is the easiest way out to you know explain things um, but this is not what we want because we have to start from a principle we need to cover all the surfaces that are available in terms of self-consumption of energy within the farm. Since I am an entrepreneur, I'm not just a president of Coldiretti, in my farm, energy costs are to over 200,000 euros a year. If I can have some support to fit photovoltaic panels on my farm, I will be able to reduce my energy costs. Of course, we are against, and I say this very clearly, we are against the photovoltaic panels on farmland because we think the farmland, because of population growth, uh, that we know that in 30 years time is going to increase by 2 billion people. Um, so we cannot but rise up to our responsibilities. Italy is already not self-sufficient as a country. so. If we reduce farmland, it means that we have, we have to reduce production. It means that we would be even less self-sufficient. We will have to continue imposing food stuff. And therefore, this would go against uh, the type of economy that we want to have, and we would be subjected to the rules set up in other economies. So the proposals made by Coldiretti consists in saying photovoltaic panels, we are speaking about farmland, this has to be uh, they have to be suspended four meters from the ground and uh, whenever there is an opportunity we have to seize it as farmers this is not what happens because very often opportunities are seized by um, others but of course depending on the size of a farm, the farm can use for less productive uh, land, 10% uh, of the soil of, of, of the land of a farm. Well, this 10% could be used also for 
photovoltaic panel fitting. Uh, so why do we have to limit this size? Because I think that Italy, Ermete, is Italy is not Holland. The citizens of the whole world come to Italy for the beauty of the landscape that we have, and uh, we can have beauty, but we can also enhance agri-food chains. So the reason why we limit uh, the size of the land to be used for fitting um, photovoltaic panels to 10 percent is important to preserve the landscape. So if you f see like uh, uh, huge uh, expanses covered by photovoltaic panels, this is not good for Italy. I will get to the conclusions, but there are lots of things to say. When I talked about knowledge, and we often exchange views with uh, Stefano, we've come to a season where we can't afford to generalize when it comes to um, um, animal husbandry. We have to talk about certain data. Um, Animal husbandry in Italy is the most sustainable in the world. It is a, a record that that country has, also compared with other European countries. Over the past few years, we have minimized environmental impact in terms of emissions. The others have recorded an increase, so we cannot generalize. If we managed to translate the option to get to forms of animal husbandry where the only penalizing element, which is the emissions of ammonia, can be um, um, fixed with the help also the recovery plan. So if we managed to give a contribution to all farms, regardless of their size, to um, um, have a sort of scrapping uh, the of the old plants, um, we would definitely uh, change things. And with respect to ammonia, we will uh, also reach an almost zero impact. When we talk about strategic questions, for example, uh, carbon fixing, uh, animal husbandry and farming can be the answer with respect to the needs that country, uh, a country like Italy can translate into great opportunities. And then digest state. Well, digest state can be the answer also from a financial standpoint. There's been a debate in Europe to uh, raise taxes uh, on all products that are not sustainable. Well, when it comes to farming, uh, these include also chemical fertilizers. And the only option we have to uh, offset the use of chemicals is organic matter. So having digested, recognized as a practice that is regularly um, used thereby uh, setting aside the maximum nitrogen thresholds. So if we say that we can use digestate um, um, until full absorption in the soil, we would actually provide a solution, a strategic solution, an environmental solution. Well, by way of conclusion, we've got another challenge, the use of byproducts. We must create a mechanism whereby all byproducts can be used in biogas and biomethane plants. We must create a mechanism whereby the byproducts of farms can be fully exploited. Of course, we have a limited number of byproducts today to comply with. It's a paradox that um, waste from production in dairies cannot be used, uh, whereas they have a, a big value, uh, a big energy value. Uh, they could be used in, uh, in biogas plants, for example, or um, waste from fruit and vegetables could be used as well.
these are all things that created the conditions. Uh, olive residue, for example, olive pulp. This translates into profitability for farms because without proper income, we would uh, um, actually cheat entrepreneurs because they won't be able to make the investments uh, they need without the necessary certainties. Freedom of enterprise means uh, creating the conditions for entrepreneurs to um, do what they want to do. I know this is controversial, but someone should explain why certain associations actually say this can be done or this can't be done. Well, if an entrepreneur decides to do something, and of course the necessary calculations are made when it comes to money and resources, and if they get some financial benefits out of that without demonizing traditional farming because it is an added value, well, the same principle would apply um, whereby there's a controversy between those who are in favor of renewable energy systems and those who are not negationists and those who are open to the market are open to businesses and want to exchange views with them. Thank you. Thank you, Prandini, uh, Cool Directi President. So we heard everyone. We heard all the protagonists of this very important industry. So very last highlight, um, Chafani once again. Well, there's room for improvement. I've seen, we um, saw what um, Ms. Rossi um, showed us. So there's a tremendous room for improvement. So it's an opportunity that we cannot miss. How can we do that? Well, um, well, there's room for improvement in this industry, but also in all the other sectors that somehow contribute to um, the uh, problems that our planet has right now, all of them. I think it is important to move from the awareness uh, that we are getting to concrete actions. We have to take responsibility for what we do, and the farming world must do that, the environmentalists must do that. That's part of the environmentalists that are not willing to grow. I'm not talking about other people, I'm talking about our world. There are people that don't want to grow. And this is truly detrimental for an idea that uh, we have been promoting since the 1980s. An encyclical letter was published by Pope Francis, Laudato Si, and this is a cultural victory for us. But this must be combined with credibility, credibility on the part of everyone, because there are good farmers and less good farmers. There are good policy makers and not so good ones. There are good environmentalists and not so good ones. So to um, bridge this gap, this gap that we still see and there's still a long way to go, because if we want to decarbonize global economy over the next 29 years, because this is what we're talking about, there's 29 years left, we have to bring about a revolution. And the first revolution we have to uh, promote is a revolution of ideas. And there's a long path to pursue and to speed up this process. We have to put together people of goodwill, people that have the right ideas and want to promote them with courage. And it's the work we've been doing with all the difficulties um, we have been encountering uh, recently. Um, we exchange views with Etre all the time. We agree on certain things, we don't on others. Well, I think it's important to start from the things we have in common and uh, start trying to understand how to solve the other outstanding problems. Thank you, Trefani. Um, from Lega Ambiente, Mercury, from you as well. So we have been talking about how to bring the planet back to the margins for human life uh, uh, and other living forms, uh, of course, other living beings. Well, those who work your job are also in the front line when it comes to the impact of uh, um, 
extreme weather events. Uh, I come from Milan, and for those who live and work in town, it has been very difficult to cope. Uh, I can't even think about those who work in the fields. Well, um, I happen to meet people that want to convince us that uh, things are changing, that the climate is changing, and I'm perplexed because they tell us about things they do not experience. All farmers wake up every day and don't know what's going to happen that day. And I'm not talking about the market. I'm not, not talking about any planned activities. I'm talking about um, what happens um, under the sun, uh, basically. There are no seasons left. We have no certainties when it comes to our planning to um, respond to a market that is asking for this planning. And I think that no one, no one um, can understand um, how impactful these changes are uh, on farmers. I'm not referring only to flooding or hailing, but also new insects, new bugs that were unseen in the past, new diseases we were not aware of, all new things that are affecting our farming and that are causing difficulty for our job. So I think we are the first to be convinced that there's something we should do. And we are the first to be convinced that um, over the past few years, we've done something to respond to all these uh, phenomena. The fact that we work in the fields, that we keep uh, growing crops. Uh, well, it's a great answer to what many people expect of our planet. Thank you very much, Mercuri. Prandini. Um, just a last highlight on the personal experience of an entrepreneur. Many of your members are entrepreneurs and are in a time of great danger uh, for their businesses, for their activities that for many years have gone on um, based on the regular um, change of seasons the uh, relation they had with Mother Earth, very different from what they experienced over the past five to 10 years. Well, we should um, have a twofold approach. First of all, research. Without research, we won't be able to give any answers. And paradoxically, we're going to lose most of our biodiversity because the effect of, of climate change is pretty evident. Then there's another question regarding the profitability of farms or of the farming industry because damage is not only caused on farms, but on products that are missing in the whole chain. And this translates into the inability to compete, uh, the inability to provide the necessary quantities of a given product on the market. So I think we should uh, rethink about insurance So we or assurance. We should make sure that all our farms know that they can do what they want to do. I know I'm not particularly welcome when I say this, but maybe we should have a sort of mandatory insurance uh, because it's created that only three regions um, are getting insured. And if these are the three regions that are mostly affected by weather conditions, well, costs for insurance companies are going to increase. And of course, it's less appealing for other farmers to get insured themselves or the percentage we have in terms of non coverage of the damage is so relevant that little attention is paid by businesses and by farms to approach these forms of guarantees. And this is also true for the profitability of farms and businesses. There are countries, for example, the US, then in the agri-food sectors create um, insurance on income and um, this could be or should be partly covered by resources coming from the EU because this is not a problem that affects Italy only it is a problem that is way more common than what you might expect very last comment well I think that today more than ever we should uh, work as a system um, often Coldiretti is criticized because they say that we do not interact, where we do not belong to bigger associations that represent many other organizations. 
Well, if you allow me, I'm an entrepreneur. Uh, before being the president of, uh, of a trade association, I'm an entrepreneur. So we have to uh, cross the fence. We have to act in synergy with production realities. Coldiretti is now interacting with the biggest industries in this country in the agri-food sector, thanks to Filiera Italia. We do this with the most important cooperatives in our country, Granarolo is an example. And we interact with uh, um, other stakeholders of public interest. SNAM, for example, for biomethane. Um, ENI, uh, for strategic products. Uh, um, that um, consider what's going to happen in 10 to 15 years. Um, and NL where possible. So we try to act in synergy with all these big players. And this is what is necessary and needed for production uh, systems. Thank you. So Cefani, Prandini, and Mercuri, thank you very much.